Hey guys, so I thought I would do you guys not a favor, but make you guys a video um, based on some questions I had seen on other people's videos, questions and statements. And I thought, you know what, this would be a pretty good video to make on my channel to help out people that might be watching here. So I did it anyway. This is how to be goth if you're poor. A lot of people feel that being goth costs a lot of money and if you're poor you can't possibly be goth and this is simply not true being poor is almost the essence of being goth what you youngsters might not realize is that um you have it lucky nowadays uh you can find goth everything everywhere all the time anywhere now online offline everywhere i mean you've got like this plethora of goth everything around you whereas most of us who got started years and years and years ago we had nothing sure stuff now can be expensive but at least you have it so you're kind of in the same boat as us who had nothing you might not have money we had nothing so I've gathered together uh, some tips from some of my friends on my Facebook page and I'm going to read them to you and then add some links that I was given as well First, I'm going to tell you my own tips, uh, how I got started, um, and uh, what I what I used to do to be goth. Um, this kind of is in conjunction with another question I've been asked. Uh, some people wanted to know like how I've seen the gothic subculture change, and I can't really answer that because I keep so much to myself. I really don't know much of what's going on out there period i know that sounds really fucked but it's true i don't know anything about the gothic subculture i mean really i don't even consider myself goth it's other people that consider me goth so i just kind of go along with it i'm into it enough that i guess i could be considered goth but in my heart i'm just me uh i don't know how else to describe it i like so much stuff that's not goth but everything is a cliche of itself now so you can't really say who is what or I don't know everything just kind of seems to overlap nowadays which in a way is good but then you kind of lose all individuality that way as well goth has become this mainstream shadow of itself is is how I feel and um marmalade I got my pretty kitty cat sitting on my lap here she's being so affectionate now sorry anyway um yeah so uh, somebody else has asked instead, instead of telling what I think about it, like what age did I start getting into it and what made me realize that I was goth and, you know, things like that. I'll see if I can actually find the comments. I know I should have looked at this before and I was going to, but then I forgot. So, um, and do, 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 do. Let's see. I will just cut this out. Okay. So, I'd rather, I'd much rather hear Raven's story of getting into the goth subculture, how young she was when she first felt the draw to the dark side, and what bands influence her then and now. So, okay. That's still a little bit hard, but I'll see what I can do. Um, I don't know, I guess I, it was around 2000 that I first started getting into goth and, uh, I didn't really know what goth was. I was never, like I said, I was never really interested in goth. So my story is kind of weird. I know I've always been different, always been obsessed with dark stuff. Now you got to remember my, my childhood, my youth was in the seventies. It wasn't in the early thousands or even in the nineties, the late nineties. It was in the seventies, seventies and eighties. So there wasn't a hell of a lot. I mean, maybe in Europe, but I wasn't in Europe at this time. I was in, in America, you know, in Georgia of all places. Um, I was in Germany as a child, but then I spent a lot of my time growing up in Georgia. I had no experience with anything of any sort of darkness or weirdness. I mean, my 
dad was in the military and it was like being on base around total normality, total normality. I knew nothing of anything that was strange or different. First time I saw somebody that looked goth was in like 2000 when I went to the, the mall and it was the supermarket outside of the mall and I saw that this girl and this guy and I've talked about them before and they had the teased up hair and the boots and wearing all black and heavy makeup and I was just like oh, they're beautiful I want to look like that I want to be like that and I was just like that I don't know what they are but they just look amazing that was my very very first experience seeing somebody that was gothic I didn't know that they were gothic at the time I didn't find out until much later once I found out that there was a name for it and this and this and that but ever since I was very young, I had tendencies that were extremely different to everybody else around me. My family, whatever friends I had, what I saw on TV, it was just, I liked things that were dark and that were scary and that other people didn't like. Don't know what they are now because I was young, but I know that I've always been outcast and weird and different. As I got older, it was things like... I liked the way bruises looked. I loved black eyes. I tried to give myself a black eye many times. I liked the horror and the death and the darkness and the black cats and the Halloween and the, you know what I mean? Like the weird and kooky that it wasn't cool to like. And I know this probably isn't making any sense to a lot of you guys because everything now is taken as the norm. Oh, you like stripy things. Oh, everybody likes stripy things now. That's, that's a given. Pretty much every gothic cliche that you know of now is stuff that if I had seen it back then, I would have liked without knowing it was a cliche. Like my whole life has kind of already been molded and shaped into this, what I am now, without me ever having had a name to it or knowing that there was something that will would have become goth. Does that make any sense? It probably doesn't. I have got no way of explaining this. I'm really sorry. But um, while the other little girls at my school liked playing with Barbie. I wanted my Barbie to die, you know, things like that. And I'm going to cut off her head and bury her outside. And I collected black beetles and bugs and played with frogs and, you know, like just weird shit, things that classed me as being weird and different. And I got into metal, into heavy metal and then death metal. And I saw kids getting tattoos and I always wanted a tattoo. I liked piercing myself. I'd sit in class and I'd pierce myself and I'd wear black all the time and I'd try to, you know, have black nails and things like that. And I was still in the metal genre. This is all through high school and everything. And I was this weird little metalhead kid, but I wasn't quite a metalhead either because I was too weird for even the metalheads to like. Nobody could tell me what it was that I was doing that was so weird, but I was definitely not quite like them either. So I was... I was completely outcast. Even the group of outcasts at school didn't like me and thought I was outcast. And there was not a name for what I was. There was just, I was just weird. People called me a witch, you know, and I don't even fucking know. And I had all this in my head and I was like, oh yeah, I can totally explain that. But now that I'm here trying to explain it, I really can't explain it. I cannot put into words what I was, what I am, what I became, how it happened. I just know that there was something in me that always loved everything that was dark and different before it became cool or accepted to like everything that was dark and different. And it pushed a lot of people away that thought that I was really strange that I was cracked up in the head and that wasn't the case at all. Like I was fascinated with blood, with my own blood. Um, used to cut myself a lot, but aside from the depressing cutting, I cut myself because I loved the scars and I loved the blood and I loved the scabs and all that weird shit, um, uh, ghosts and demons and spirits and, and just weird shit. And then when I was, I stayed like metalhead, but that loved more darker shit that wasn't quite metal up until I split with my first husband, probably around 2000. And then I got with this guy, Fred and Fred had been a previous goth. He was no longer goth when I met him but he was goth before I met him and so he knew a lot about it and he was explaining to me what goth was and this and that and I was like that sounds really boring I wasn't interested at all and he showed me some goth music and I was like wow that music really sucks there's nothing to it it's just and it was like what the fuck is that Christian Death, Susie and the Banshees um, 
a lot of music that he liked I fucking hated and I was like well that's not something I'm ever getting into and then he lent me the Black Bible for CD set and I had it on my stereo I went to go take a shower and it was on shuffle and I heard this one song and I was like ooh I kind of like that what is that and it was um, Annabelle Lee by Ataraxia and I was like oh I fucking love that song that's cool. And so I started looking through the CDs with a bit more interest and I started finding a couple more songs that I liked and it just kind of slowly from there just built on. I have no idea how I found out everything that I found out. I pretty much was alone in the whole thing. I had to teach myself everything. I didn't know a single other person into it. He and I split up. There was no internet. We didn't, I didn't own a computer, no internet access, no friends that were into it, nothing. I was 100% by myself and I had the pictures in the CD to go on and the record label, which was Cleopatra Records. And I went to the old CD warehouses and found other bands, other compilations um, to look at. Started finding out who I liked. Corpus Delicti, Crew Shadows, Bella Morte became my first favorites. Diary of Dreams, those were my first, the first bands that I fell in love with. From there, I looked at like their hair, their makeup, the way they dressed. I started doing my makeup differently, um, combining different bits and pieces. Um, picked up and tried a stupid shit. Like, I loved that little, you know, bindi that Gwen Stefani had on, and I was like huge into No Doubt back then. So I used to glue that on just for something sparkly. It reminded me of like a piercing. I didn't even know it was an Indian thing. That's how ignorant I was. Um, but I love the way it accented and so I, I did that and gems by my eyes and now I've just got piercings and um, I tried the hair color thing, couldn't do it so I had clip-ons or paints um, didn't really try different hairstyles because I didn't I didn't want to cut my hair off I used to wear like a black veil in my hair and I would go and buy Halloween costumes and use the Halloween costumes as actual clothes because a lot of them, if you find the better quality ones, they could actually pass as clothes. And when there were no gothic shops, this is before Hot Topic even came, that was really all you had. And so that's what I did. And people already looking at me like I was stupid, but I quickly discovered the style that I wanted back then, which was more romantic, goth with a black veil, corset, big black wedding skirt, black lipstick, total cliche everything. It took me many, many, many years to trial and error and find my own look, who I wanted to be, how I wanted to look, how I wanted to dress, what style I wanted. I've been through many different styles. I did the whole King Arthur dresses, long bell sleeves and all that. Did the whole fetish goth thing. Um, never did Lolita, any of that shit, but I did a lot of the garter belts and vinyl and PVC and shit like that. And, um, now I just do whatever. I don't really have a goth style anymore. I don't think, um, the hair is just the hair because I had to cut it all off. It's not because I wanted a gothy hairstyle. I just wanted not to have to cut all of my hair to this. Um... And the heavy makeup is because I love doing my makeup like this. This is just how I'm personally comfortable. Tattoos, because I love tattoos. Piercings, because I love piercings. I don't do anything to be goth. I just am who I am. I think you run into trouble when you try to label things. You shouldn't label anything. You should just be yourself. Some people 
look goth, but they don't like anything that is goth. Like, I don't even like a lot of gothic music. I think a lot of it is still very boring and it kind of sucks. Like, there's got to be something catchy. And with so many goth bands, it's just nothing catchy. It's just kind of this droning nothing. And I, I really don't like it. I know a lot of good songs and a lot of good bands, so I could recommend some, but there are not a lot, not many. And, um, yeah, uh, as far as who I look up to or inspired by, I'm not really inspired by anybody. That's basically how I got into it. Uh, I was called goth before people would yell at me as I was walking by, hey, gothic, and I'm like, what the fuck is goth? Like, I had no idea that there was even a name for it. And um, really, the goth label has only been put on me by other people, and it's a label I've carried with me for at least a good, almost, well, not quite half my life. Well, yeah, close to half my life already. Wow, that's crazy. Um, I know this has probably not been very helpful or interesting, but I'm sorry, that's the best I could come up with. It's just, you know, if I were to be even more cliche, I would say I was born goth in a way because I've, I've been interested in everything goths are interested in pretty much my whole life without there being a label or a name, not knowing what it was, just knowing I liked dark creepy, kooky, spooky things, Adam's family and everything that nowadays is cliche and expected. I liked before it was cliche and expected. And now I'm, I am just like everybody else. Whereas I was into all this before it was an acceptable thing. And it kind of sucks for me in a way as an elder goth or whatever, because nowadays being weird and being into these things, it's like people roll their eyes. Oh yeah, well, every goth likes that. Every goth's into that. Well, for those of us that started when nobody was into it, it wasn't that easy. It wasn't like, oh yeah, everybody's into it. It was something that we had to fight for with people looking at us like we deserve to be locked up. And we're sitting here like, oh, I like that. You know, oh, cemeteries are beautiful or whatever. And people are like, what the fuck is wrong with you? And now they're just like, oh, you must be goth. You know, we had to fight through a lot, a lot of people judging us and talking shit and hating and just not understanding, not knowing what it is. Why are you liking these things? Why are you interested in this? Why are you wearing all black? Why is your hair like that? Why is your makeup like that? Why are you sticking metal in your face? Why do you have tattoos? You know, why are you, you? And now you can get away with being you because so many people are into it. We did not have that luxury. Yeah, a lot of you elder goths will totally understand this. Um, it was very hard being into it before it was as accepted as it is today. So you guys have got it very, very lucky. Now, for part two of this video, um, I will make another video because this is running really long. So this is just to answer that question, how I got into it, how long I've been into it, my attempt to answer the question. Next video, I will talk about the tips and tricks for if you're poor, how how to try to be gone. 